Everyone's looking for the giant luscious green leaves, but it can seem impossible. And it's because you've been led astray by all the YouTube influences out there. I'm here to tell you why humidity, ambient humidity is more important than any lighting you could ever supply. So let's get into it. Today's video, we're going to be looking at how to determine what an ideal moisture level is, why it matters and how to exactly achieve it. And if you are new to this channel, every Friday during the winter time, I'm going to be posting a fact filled, scientifically fact filled video all dedicated to houseplants. So if you have any special requests, be sure to drop those down below. Turns out plant leaves are smart. I've talked about this on this channel a number of different times. The bottom of our plant leaves contain something called stomata. The stomata are encased in something called guard cells. The guard cells are kind of like security. They don't want the plant to run out of water. The guard cells are sensing that there's not enough ambient moisture to shut the stomata quickly. Plants that are meant for desert environments like cacti and succulents have fewer than those made for tropical environment. And the reason for this is because as the stomata open, they tend to let water out. And if the guard cells along with the stomata sense that the ambient humidity is not saturated enough, those guard cells will close the stomata. The reason why we need those stomata to stay open longer is because they allow for CO2 to enter the plant. Photosynthesis is what produces these big luscious leaves and the more sugars and carbs inside of the plant, and the fatter they become. Without that excess CO2 being able to be absorbed by the plant, we run into issues. And this can happen if our ambient humidity is not high enough. And without water, we also have a lack of nutrients because inside of the water of our plant, that is how our nutrients is moved and mobilized around the plant. Think of water in plant as the equivalent of blood in humans. We know why this matters, but how do we determine what humidity a plant needs? Because keep in mind, if we give a plant that normally doesn't need much too much, we can end up with rot. And if we end up with a plant that needs a ton, we don't give it enough, we don't end up with enough photosynthesis taking place. So when it comes to determining how high of humidity your plant needs, there are some things you can actually look at on the plant. The first and probably most obvious is some sort of tropical label. If the label says tropical plant, it definitely needs a higher humidity. You'd be aiming for about 60% relative humidity on average. If you can continually keep it at 60% relative humidity, you're made in the shade you will have adequate amounts of photosynthesis taking place and light and CO2 will be in equilibrium and you'll have some really rapid growth that pops out. Now, number two is actually what we call the drip tip. Now, some plants have more than one of these, but this beautiful elephant ear definitely has one giant one. And the drip tip is a design that the plant has made over time. What it helps ensure is that if water is too high ambiently in their environment, that it does not necessarily sit on the leaf. The drip tip forces the water to move down the leaf to the tip and then eventually drip off. And this is because the environment they're from has such high humidity that the plants tend to struggle if the water sits on the leaf too long. But a drip tip is a sign that the plant is used to or natively from an area that needs high humidity. Meaning if we provide 60% or more relative humidity, we will see some really rapid growth. Growth. And that's actually how I got this bad boy and all these plants in this room to grow crazy was when I got the plant sensor and then I started obsessing and playing it like it was a game and adding humidifiers. It's a whole thing. The next thing is actually fuzzy leaves. Now we commonly see this with African violets, but there's other examples out there. And I'll actually get you guys to put the names down below for ones you can think of. Now the reason for this is because the fuzz is actually designed to catch ambient humidity. These plants naturally occur or grow in an area where they don't have much rain, meaning the roots aren't meant to uptake a majority of the water. The actual leaves are designed to take in the water. So those hairs will capture water and then breathe it in, if you will. This is why things like African violets can be so difficult to grow. The roots don't need the water, the leaves do. And the last most obvious sign is epiphytic roots. So monsteras have these very obviously. There's also orchids that have these and a number of other plants, but essentially any root that looks more finger-like, rope-like, or just in general does not have any root hairs. If the plant doesn't have the fine little root hairs, it's not meant to go in soil. It's actually 
actually meant to grow on a log or a tree or ambiently take up moisture through its roots. This is why these plants do so well in an orchid bark soil rather than a potting soil. The lack of hair roots means that the plant isn't actually meant to work with the cation exchange capacity of soil. What the plant is meant to do is capture water ambiently through the air or as it trickles down the root. This is why misting these plants works so well when we foliar apply our fertilizers. Now, with that being said, those roots actually aren't what they look on surface level. If we were to take a magnifying glass to them, they actually are layers of cells, meaning as they are in a moist environment, the water works its way into the actual cells themselves, similar to the, what we would see with a potting soil. So this is why they need a higher ambient humidity. When it comes to increasing humidity in the air, we can use misting and we can use pebble trays. And I actually want to use the sensor that we designed to look at which method is better and run some experiments. But in the meantime, what I can say with absolute assurance is that a humidifier will work. A humidifier basically takes very tiny little particulates of water and mist them into the air, making it much easier for the puzzle pieces to come together and ultimately actually change the ambient humidity in particular for a plant room. Now, what I will say is if you want to learn more about how temperature and warmer temperatures actually affect humidity, I heavily suggest you check out my incredibly nerdy video on VPD, vapor pressure deficit, which is going to be key. If you have an Ikea cabinet or a plant room that has condensation, you actually may want to add a space heater to that environment to help to bump that actual ambient humidity up rather than having that humidity collect. Warmer air holds more moisture. And that's actually another beauty of that sensor is that it will tell you what you need to adjust to achieve that so you don't end up with mold and mildew in your house because that is definitely something you wanna watch out for. Anyways, I hope this helped you guys out and I will talk to you next time. Bye. Today's video sponsor is Ketonic, 100% organic soil amendment sourced from sustainable peat. It's Omni listed and certified by EcoCert Canada. Ketonic helps your garden grow and thrive by promoting microbial activity and naturally replenishing the soil health. Get 15% off your bottle of Ketonic with the discount code in the description.